Hello, game design students. I hope you guys are all doing very well. I am making a couple little videos here. Maybe it'll be one video, maybe it'll be two, um, about how to program your game to be able to use a controller. Um, and so in Construct 3, which we'll go over to this right now, it has built-in controller support. Um, it's called a game pad. Um, and it sort of defaults to, uh, I, I think it was built around the Xbox 360 controller, um, but the Xbox controller works as well. Um, so I just have a wired one here, and that's what I'll be using. Um, you can use other controllers, um, like a PS4 controller, a Switch controller, some other generic ones, but sometimes it takes a little bit. Uh, you have to install some other drivers and things. Um, but I want to show you how to program a quick game to be able to use the controller. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click New to open up an empty project. And I can just call it Controller. Um, and I'm going to leave all these things normal here. Okay, the viewport, uh, 1920 by 1080, all those kind of things are totally fine. So we're going to create this, and here we are. Um, we have our, um, our viewport and our layout. We have our properties bar, project bars, layer bar. The first thing we're going to do is actually just rename our layer 0 over here to background. And we're just going to set up some things here in the background and then create a player layer as well. So in the background, I want to double click, and I'm going to add in a tiled... Uh, background. I can just click anywhere. And I think what I'm going to do, just to make it nice and easy, is I'm just going to do like sort of a starry sort of background. We'll do like a space theme. Um, just make like a few little stars. Okay, should be pretty easy. I'm going to exit out of this and we'll insert that right where I clicked, but you'll notice it's kind of small. So to set this up, just right click, um, go to align, and we want to cover the layout. And so what this is going to do is just cover our whole layout with this black um, tiled background here. And then I can go and lock this in place. And then I'm actually just going to lock up the layer. And that might seem kind of redundant, but it just makes extra sure that you're not selecting that background. You have that in place, and now it's locked up. Um, now, I'm going to right click over here in my Layers panel, and I'm going to add a layer at the top. And I'm going to call this the Player Layer. And in this layer, this is where we're going to create our player sprite um, and add some behaviors to it. So I can zoom in here just a little closer so we can see our layout. Oh, messing some things up here. But we're right here in our layout. What I want to do now is double click. And because our player layer is unlocked, it will insert this next object on our player layer. And I'm going to search sprite. I'm just going to insert a sprite. And I'm going to do it right here. Um, I want to make my sprite uh, a lot smaller than 250 by 250. That's kind of big. I'm just going to go 50 by 50. And I have keep aspect ratio unchecked, right? If I have this checked, then anytime I change one, it'll change the other one as well. So just something to know. If yours isn't changing or it is changing like that, that's all that checkbox does right there. So I'm going to click OK. And it's going to make my thing a little bit smaller here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this line. And I'm going to go, making my spaceship here, I'm going to go blue, I think. I like this blue today. And I'm just going to make some lines. I'm just going to make it a little triangle. Pretty easy to see here. Dunk the inside of this, get my brush. Make sure this is looking really nice. Now, this isn't super important to do, but it is something you might want to review doing is changing the collision polygon, right? It's your hitbox for your sprite here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of these points and delete it, and then I'm going to drag the other one here. And so now what this means is that my sprite will only collide with this polygon right here, these three points. Okay, So instead of it being a square, it's an actual triangle now. There's one more thing I need to do, and I actually need to add another image point. So the origin point is fine to leave it right there. We're going to right click over here, we're going to add a new image point, okay? and it's image point one, and we're going to put it right at the front, okay? because we're going to have our little spaceship here shoot a laser, and that is where we want that laser to be spawned from. Okay? So you've created your little sprite here, made it a triangle, added the collision polygon, and added an image point right at the very front. Okay? So I can exit out of here now. I want to make sure I rename this sprite to player, um, I think player is fine. You could rename it ship, spaceship, rocket. 
doesn't totally matter what you do. But now we need to add a few behaviors to this. Okay. The first behavior we need to add is, I always like to add solid. Okay. So this makes sure if we have any other objects that they actually collide with each other. We want to bind this to the layout, so bound to layout. This means that no matter where we move our ship, it'll always stay within our layout. Add another new behavior, and we want scroll to. Okay, this is really important because as our ship moves around, we want our viewport, our actual camera, to stay on it. And the last one we want to add here is actually eight direction movement. Okay, so four behaviors, solid, bound to layout, scroll to, and eight direction. Now what this does for us is it creates this little spaceship and I can play, I can test out the game here and if I use the arrow keys, I can actually fly the spaceship around, okay? And we've messed with eight direction movement before in this class and if you've watched my other video tutorials, you kind of know about this and you can come in here and as long as you have your player uh, selected, you can edit the max speed, acceleration, deceleration, um, you can change all sorts of things on here and mess with that eight direction movement. So we're not gonna talk about that too much. But right now, you have this player sprite on a background, able to move around, and you scroll to it, and it has all of its behaviors that work great. What we need to do now is we need to introduce a separate control system to it. So I'm actually going to double click, and in this search bar up here, I'm going to type game pad. And this is an input here. And so you can actually scroll down as well. Uh, gamepad, keyboard, mouse, or touch. It supports a lot of different input types, but I'm going to use gamepad. And now this has been added to the editor. What this allows me to do now is if I go to my event sheet, I can start to set up events with the gamepad. Okay. So for example, let's go to gamepad, and we are going to use this compare access command right here. Now what this does, gamepad zero, that's just our default gamepad. If you have one plugged in on USB, that should be zero. And the left analog stick is this one, right? It's your analog stick on the left side of the controller. And that's typically the one you use for movement. Remember an X axis is the horizontal side to side movement and the Y axis is the up and down movement. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our left analog X axis. And we have to add in some comparisons here. So we're gonna say if our comparison uh, so if our x-axis on our controller is less than or equal to, and the magic number for this is actually negative 25, okay? So if the left analog x-axis is less than 25, and what this is meaning is if it's pushing this way, right, we want to add an action and we want to make our player, and we're going to click simulate control to the left, okay? So on gamepad zero, if the left analog x-axis is less than or equal to negative 25, simulate eight direction pressing left. Okay, let's test it out and see if this works. There it is, right? Now I don't have any other, anything else programmed right now, so I can't go to the right, I can't go up and down, but I can go left, that is working, okay? We're gonna do something similar here, we're gonna add an event, we're gonna go gamepad, and we're gonna compare axis, and we're still going to stay on that x-axis. And we're going to say if it's greater than or equal to, and this time we're going to say 25. So if it's greater than or equal to 25, we're going to add an action, player, and we're going to simulate control again. And we're just going to make it go to the right. So the only difference we've added here is we've enabled our eight direction thing to go left and right. So let's test it out. I'm going to hit the controller. You can see here to the left, to the right, it's working. There it is, left and right. Okay. So right now we have our left and right um, programmed. We're gonna do something similar here to go up and down, but in this case, right, we have to choose our gamepad, compare axis, but this time we have to uh, change it to left analog Y axis. Now be careful you don't change to right analog X or Y axis because that will be the other stick here. That's what that one will do, which is fine if that's what you want, but for the sake of this program, we want to use the left analog. So if the left analog Y axis is less than or equal to negative 25, I believe we are going up. So we're going to simulate control up, done. Oh, alarm's going off here. We're going to add another event. 
game pad, compare axis, left analog Y axis, right up and down, if it is greater than or equal to 25, then we're going to make our player go down, okay? Let's test it out and see if I did this right. Sometimes I screw it up and that's okay. Up, down, left, right, and all the way in between, right? So now I'm able to fully control my player here with my left analog stick, right? I know you can't really see it. I don't have a ton of camera angles set up to be able to do that, but I'll kind of hold it up. So left, right, up, down, and in between, right? And I know for you it's gonna look reversed because this is a front-facing camera, but it's working, right? There it is. That right there is the programming you need to be able to set up a controller um, for movement. Now in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to set up some buttons right, some button presses to be able to add some different things to it. Primarily how to use the trigger buttons, okay, to make your uh, ship here shoot like a little laser or a projectile. And it's a good review of the bullet mechanics as well in Construct 3. Um, I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, you can leave comments or uh, email me or comment on Google Classroom and we'll get you ready to go. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.